welcome back into the studios of Revival Time Radio for this uh, another edition of the Watchman Radio Program. Of course, today is the 11th of uh, November. Uh, the USA uh, presidential election has passed and uh, of course we all know that uh, Donald Trump is the new president of the United States. And uh, the reaction of people across uh, the United States of America in uh, uh, certain states and of course not only there but uh, in other countries has uh, prompted me to uh, have a little chat with you uh, concerning this and uh, the Lord has led me to send uh, this message to you that uh, you should not write off anyone because of their past so that is the topic of this little talk today, is uh, don't be quick, don't be so quick to write off someone or anyone because of their past, what they have done in their past. The fact of the matter is uh, Donald Trump, he was not a very good man. He did a lot of bad things in his past. But we are going to ex explore uh, the scriptures today. And to find out why God is saying we should not write off anyone. Or in particular, we should not write off Donald Trump because of his past or what he knows and uh, does not know. And uh, of course, God is omni omniscient. And we can never fully understand or understand the way how God works. The way how he does things. Our finite minds cannot comprehend God to that point where we can say for all certain that God is going to move in this way. That God is going to uh, react in, in this way. We can never do that because we cannot understand fully with our limited uh, self in this flesh how God really thinks, how he really uh, uh, moves and how he does his thing you know we need as people especially us as children of God those of us that calls or, or, uh, that call ourselves Christians we have to be careful the word of God tells us clearly in Proverbs uh, ch chapter 3, 5 and 6 that we should not lean on our own understanding but in all our ways we should acknowledge God we cannot lean on our own understanding because our understanding as I said just now it is finite it is flawed if we lean and we depend upon what we know what we think what we understand we are going to fall into trouble we are going to get ourselves into trouble that is why the Bible is telling us this do not lean on it. But in all our ways, we should acknowledge God. Always try to see what God is doing. Uh, try try to, to, to recognize that God's hand is at work somehow, somewhere. Because nothing gets him by surprise. Don't think that God was up there sitting in heaven watching the election, wondering how it was going to go. God already knew this. He had already planned this a long time ago. He is an omniscient God. He is all-knowing. And so we need to recognize that basic fact. And recognize that in everything that God has a plan. He does have a plan. One other thing we need to really uh, recognize again, especially as Christians, because the people of the world, they may not know this, they may not really understand these things, but as Christians, we cannot underestimate the, the, the mercy and the love of God. We cannot underestimate how compassionate He can be. Yes, we can be merciful ourselves, we can be compassionate ourselves, but to a very finite extent. But God, in all his uh, mercies and compassion and love, is uh, he is infinite. Uh, there is no bound 
<laughs> there is no bound. It's something we cannot really understand. But there is no bound, no boundary to his mercy, to his love, to his compassion towards men. Not just some men, but towards all men. God loves everybody just the same. It doesn't matter what they have done in their past. It doesn't matter who they are. Even what they're doing now. Listen, as a Christian, don't ever think that God loves you more than he loves the sinner man. So don't think for one second that God loves you or anyone else above anybody else. So he does not love you more than he loves Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton for that matter. And I want to share something with you as well. The extent of his love towards you right now will never be greater or lesser. God's love is exactly what it is, pure love. It cannot be more, it cannot be less. So he will never love you more than he loves you right now. The sinner man out there, he will never love that sinner man any more or any less than he loves them at this very moment. So don't underestimate God, his compassion, his love and his mercy towards men in general and I would dare to say towards the United States of America. I know there are some that are saying that uh, judgment has come to America or judgment is, 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 uh, uh, you know, is, is here right now and that God has uh, forsaken it and God has uh, written it off. God has turned his back and is ready to pass on judgment. We do not know that. I'm not saying no and I'm saying, and I'm certainly not saying yes. Because I have recognized that God is compassionate. His mercies has no bound. And so we cannot really know for absolute certainty that God is going to do what you think or what you say that he's going to do at this very moment. Jonah, he underestimated the compassion of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. He himself felt that Nineveh, the people of Nineveh, they were so wicked. But he felt that they, they, they had crossed that line. He felt that God should have destroyed them because they were too wicked. They had gone too far. So he had written them off and decided... He didn't want to go as God has instructed him to, 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 to speak to them. And even when he did, he still wanted them to be destroyed. He still felt that God was going to destroy them. But did God destroy Nineveh as Jonah thought he would? No. God showed him that although they were wicked, although they had gone so far away from him, although they did not even know him, that he still loved them, that he still had compassion on them, that he still showed them mercy. And that is the God that we serve. Not a God that is just ready to rain down judgment without giving the necessary chances that he wants to give. Of course, I'm not saying again, I'm not saying either way that God is not going to judge or, or he is going to judge. I'm just saying we should be very careful as Christians as to pronounce judgment thinking that we know God that way we do not and so we have to recognize God's hand in every situation whether good, bad, favorable or unfavorable we have to recognize God I just want to share one last piece of scripture uh, with you um, because the Bible tells us quite clearly in the book of First Corinthians, that, that 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 you know, God will use listen the foolish things of this world, what you will consider as foolish, the people that you will consider as foolish. God delights 
Listen, God delights in using these things or these people to confound those think that they know it all. Those that think or think that they know it all, that they have all, uh, everything, you know, figured out. God will use the stupid, so to speak, the uneducated, the unqualified, the foolish people, the foolishness, the foolish things. He will use them for his glory. Why? Because when he works through them, they will not try to claim his glory. Because they themselves know they are not capable, they are not qualified, they are not able. And so they will recognize that it was God that did what he did. Because only him and only he alone can do what he had done. They will recognize it and God will get the glory. And it's all about that. Giving God the glory. The ones that are wise or well educated, well qualified when they accomplish things, it's all about them. They want to get all the praise. They want to get all the glory and rob God of his praise and his glory. First Corinthians chapter one, verses 26 to 31. I want you to listen to this. It says, for you see your calling Brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Straight off the bat, it tells you that God, he does not look out for those that are qualified. He does not, uh, you know, search out for those that are, are wise, those that are noble. His calling is for the other set of people, the foolish ones. Let's go on. Verse 27 says, But God has chosen, God himself has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Imagine that. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. <laughs> that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That as it is written. He who glories, let him glory in the Lord wow what a passage of scripture he has chosen the things which are not to bring to nothing the things which are that line is so powerful the things that don't exist he will choose them bring them into existence and bring to nothing the things that do exist. That is why the Lord is saying today, do not write off anybody because of who they are, what they know. In particular, Donald Trump, he has no experience. He says a lot of foolish things, yes. But the thing about him, as I see, that there is some level of God fearingness in him. His vice president has openly professed Christianity that he is a follower of Jesus Christ. And that for me is huge. The fact that he recognizes or, rec or he recognizes God for who he is is very huge. And so, not because he doesn't know what he does. To me, he is a per perfect candidate for God to use in this situation. He is someone ignorant 
So therefore God can use him to confound the wise. A lot of people say he's stupid. Yes, maybe. I don't know. Maybe if he's so stupid, he wouldn't. Uh, how would he have been so successful in his business endeavors? But aside from that, if he is stupid politically or in the ways that you would say, again, he is the perfect candidate for God to use because those are the kind of people that God is using. God is looking, especially in these last days, he's looking for them and he will use them so that he can be glorified through what he will do through them. Don't be so quick to write off somebody because of their past. Look for God. Look to God. Because only him should be glorified. And God will get his glory through using the foolishness, the ignorant, the stupid, the uneducated of this world to confound those that think they know it all that think they have uh, all the the, the 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 bright ideas all the right things to do and say those people will be confounded they will be brought down low because god is god until we come to recognize that God is infinite in all his attributes all his personalities his compassion his love everything his patience they are infinite at times God will say no that's enough yes but when does he say that that is not for us to determine that is not for us to know that is not for us to go out and say because we do not know we cannot ever know in this flesh with this inf with this finite being that we are now so please let us lean not on our own understanding but in all our ways let us acknowledge god for he is who he is who he says he is he is the god of the universe the creator of the universe creator of you and i we are living in some very last days and God is moving in some strange ways, some mighty ways, ways that you do not expect because our time here is short. Our time is short. The rapture of the bride of Christ, it can be at any time. So we have to be wise, be discerning and look out for God. Don't try to figure things out ourselves, but to, to, to lean on God, to acknowledge Him and humble ourselves under His mighty hand, under His understanding, under His ways. Humble ourselves, humble our very mind, our thinking. Let us humble ourselves, especially us as Christians. God is God again and he will always be God no man can change it you and I we cannot change it no person no entity no group of people no matter how big or great they may seem can change that very fact that God is God and he does things the way he sees fit the way that he knows will bring about what he wants to accomplish and his thoughts towards us are for good and not for evil this is one of his great promises in the word of god and so everything that he allow he is allowing at this moment he is allowing for a good reason let us remember that let us remember that god is a wonderful god he's a great god omnipresent omniscient in all his ways Jesus is coming soon if you are not ready I want to strongly encourage you to set your house in order now 
stop doing the things that you're doing that you know for certain that are not right i'm sure the holy spirit is convicting you in some way or the other but because everybody else is doing it because everybody else is saying this and that you're just joining in you're just uh, hopping on the boat get off and stop and think for yourself get into the word and see what the word says and the scriptures I've gave, given you right now, you should meditate upon them and consider them seriously. Get your house in order. If you're, if you're not saved, you, have, you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the time. Today is the day. Because whether you believe it or not, you cannot change it. Jesus is coming. He is real. There is a heaven and a hell. And those that are not uh, surrendered to Jesus Christ, who have not repented of their sins, are going to hell. Yes, you are going to hell if you are not a born again Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, who have, who, who obeys his word, who live according to his word, who is sanctified, holy, and living righteous you are not that if you're not, not doing those things if you're not trying to to be the way that god wants you to be according to his word you will go to hell no matter who you are whether you believe it yes or no so make the decision now before it is too late because yes signs of the times are pointing exactly to the fact that we are at the end the rapture could happen at any time. I'm not saying, given no time frame, I'm not saying, a lot of people have been saying, oh, he could come this month, he could come before the weekends, he could come before the year ends and all those kind of things. I'm, I'm not getting into that because we do not know that. Nobody knows. We can speculate, but that uh, those speculations can, can lead others astray. So I want us to also be, be cautious uh, about that be, be cautious about saying things like that but we know that we are living in the season of his coming we know that it can happen at any time so let us tell the people to be prepared now should he come or should he call that we would be ready we do not know when he's coming so let us be ready so that when he comes with we are ready because if he should come and we are not ready we are going to be left behind we're not going to get on to that chain get on to that bus whatever we have to be ready before he comes that when he comes we just jump on the ship we just sail into the sky so i want to just thank you for joining me again today for this another edition of the watchman radio program broadcasting live from revival time radio here in london england do remember you can uh, log into this radio station via the internet search for revival time uh, radio and you can also go through the website uh, www.supportthepoor.com dot co dot uk sorry and uh, the link to listen to the station will also be there uh, if you have a tuning up you can just uh, download it and search for revival time radio and you can hear where we bring you the unadulterated word of god uh, 24 7 every day if you want to find me on facebook you can search for me there by searching for curtis minister roach or curtis minister or minister curtis roach sorry uh, or the watchman radio program uh, those three profiles they're mine uh, one is a page you can leave me a message if you would like to ask me any questions and I'll be happy to respond. Um, please share these programs. They, they will be on YouTube all, as well. Um, but, uh, uh, and you can search for my, my uh, YouTube um, uh, channel under my name, Curtis Roach, where all of my YouTube videos are uh, uploaded for your upbuilding, for your edification and so on. Please share this program as much as possible. We need to hear these words, uh, th these words from the Lord that I usually bring to you from time to time. Again, thank you for watching and God richly bless you. Goodbye.